Yeah, with all the, yeah, which I, I, like, I fell in love with Dallas completely. I'm so excited that I, I get to spend more time. And, um, and there was, it just, so it surprised me uh, between all these really just wonderful places to eat and all the art that's happening there. Um, and I love driving around. And I think there was, there was some kind of fair happening at the time, which was also just so much fun. What is it? Is it called the Dallas Texas Fair? State the Texas, fair. okay, it's tech, yeah. And I remember the, bit, the, the, what do you call those? The Ferris Fair? Bit, thank you, the Ferris Fair. <laughs> um, and sunsets, I just had a beautiful time. Um, and I, I have a special place for Texas in my heart because my father, when I was, he's a professor of botany. And when I was seven, he brought us, the whole family, for sabbatical to live in Austin, um, which is the next place I'm going to with Jerry. Um, that will be in November, I believe. And I don't know, I just, I think that year is what uh, kind of connected me with my, my truly American heart <laughs> and, and brought me to, to the understanding that, that I, I really love being in America and that this is my home. Um, English became re almost first nature. Um, so yeah, so I just, I was really happy that, I, that Dallas had that same effect, that I just fell in love with it. Uh, I mean, for what I do with contemporary music, a lot of times I get the music at a pretty late, <laughs> at a pretty late time as well. But with with film music, you can get it an hour before. It's not, and for the most part, it won't be such technically difficult. I don't mean technical in terms of the instrument, but to to read, to sight read. Um, but things can change. You have to be very malleable and very flexible with what's happening, you know, uh, which is, again, it's part of that fun. Um, they can write it out and then hear it and be like, nope. And literally somebody will go into a back room and come back and you'll get com something completely different for that same cue and just go for it. Um, it's really fun. Just really, really fun. Okay, so you will be performing now John Mackey's Songs from the End of the World with the Dallas Winds. Yeah. And this is a pretty massive work. How do you go about preparing for something like that? Um, I, I have a kind of system down already for learning pieces. What I usually do is um, go into the lyrics first, if there are words, and really kind of learn them as a dr as drama. Um, not not connected to, to even the music and um, internalize them, learn about by heart. And then I put it all together and um, one of the more essential things for me is really to learn things by heart. It, it allows a kind of connection with my body and with the material and with communicating it then la later to the audience. Um, that's really most of the work that I do and then just practicing and practicing and practicing. Yeah. What, so the piece that you're going to be premiere, I guess, I don't think this is a premiere, um, with Dallas right, Wins, right. Um, you've performed this before? Um, no, was... I only did one movement. Um, this was in Schladming where, um, oh God, I can't remember what it's called, Mid-Europe Festival happens. Uh, yeah, and I fell in love with the piece immediately. Um, I've, yeah, the, the other two, the, the first and second movements I haven't done yet. Um, this, is, this is new for me as well. But it's a whole journey. This piece is just, it's, it's a gem. And, um, and actually the biggest challenge for me with this piece is that it moves me very deeply. Um, and I, it's that, that kind of balance that performers, uh, especially singers, have to find between not getting too internally emotional and actually just conveying what the piece is. Yeah. You know? What do you find in this piece lyrically that is the most... Um, it resonates the most with you. Um, let me. F I, I kind of understand the question. Uh, just John writes his music. It's uh, very. I find it very intimate. Um, 
that his connection, and perhaps it's because he's, he works with his incredible wife, um, but, but in other pieces as well, there's just um, this very genuine and kind of stripped down um, quality to his writing uh, that is scary as a performer. You really have to kind of trust that it's going to be okay because everything is very transparent. There's a lot of transparency, but it's part of the, this, this beauty that comes through. How did Good Night Moon come about? Um, I was pregnant. <laughs> uh, then I had a, a boy who's the joy of my life. And uh, it's one of those books that parents read for, for kids over and over and over and over again. And my husband at the time, Eric Whitaker, um, was, I think, the book was so ingrained into his his mind that music started maybe getting accompanied with it. You'd have to ask him. I don't know exactly how it flowers that part of it. Um, but he, uh, we had a little house at a studio at the time, and uh, he asked me to come and just try things out, which is a lot of the process of, of the way he would write, um, just singing singing little bits and um that's it and it just came to be yeah and i think it's actually a perfect piece in terms of just the poem and how he said it is such a beautiful piece and it's such a beautiful book i love that book i so know much. me too and i love to when i perform a lot of times um audience members depending on generation uh will either say i, I read that to my child you know, growing up, or I heard that being read to me all the time, and it's just, it's just lovely. It's a really nice connection.